the international break, I usually, I usually hate it. For the Arsenal fan base, it was fucking needed. People saying that we've lost three hours this weekend. The clock down for the hour, I'm watching England for the other two hours. They've got a point. But Arsenal as a fan base, as a, as a club, we needed a break. But my dear God, that still doesn't stop someone associated with the club. Either it's the manager, the fucking chairman, the player. It still doesn't stop them from saying stupid shit. Olivier Giroud come out. He said, you know, Arsene Menger, we believe in him. We all want him to sign. We believe in his philosophies, stuff like this. Fair enough. You have your own opinion, Olivier. Do your thing, boy. But then a couple, just a couple, just a couple of days later, he comes up with this bullshit. Right, I'm reading this quote. I'm reading this quote. In the league, we, we are always amongst the top four, Giroud said. Obviously, our goal is to win titles, but this is not the determining factor in my career. What? When you consider that Olivier Giroud is probably our only outright striker. Sanchez isn't a striker, he's more of a wing attacking midfielder. Welbeck is obviously a striker that he plays predominantly from the left. He did that for Man United, he's done it for England, he does it for us. Lucas Perez was a winger, he played one season up front, not really a striker. Olivier Giroud only plays in one position, centre forward, our only real striker. And he's coming out saying shit like this. He's basically saying that if we don't win, ah, I'm okay. I'm going to go back to my million pound mansion and chill. This is what fucks me off. This is exactly what fucks me off. And of course he wants Wenger to stay. I'll tell you why he wants Wenger to stay, because Wenger believes in him. Imagine him saying that type of shit around Alex Ferguson. Old Bex, old David Beckham, remember back in the day? He got a boot kicked at him for chatting shit. I think there would be multiple boots flying Giroud's way. And Giroud, for me, he does get a lot of criticism. He's a fucking lamposty shit. We bought this man for 12 million. He gets you 20, 25 goals in all competitions a season. That ain't bad. For what you pay for, 12 million, that is not bad. Especially when you correct, you've seen Saldada go Tottenham. Do fuck all. Andy Carroll went Liverpool, 35 million. Did fuck all. Benteke went 35 million to Liverpool. Did fuck all. Wilfred Boney went to fucking Man City. Was that 30 million? I don't know. It, it was. I think it was something like that did fuck all for what we paid he's done well but let's just have it right he's a backup striker quotes like that just highlight that he's got poor mentality basically saying he don't care about it if they lose he don't care he don't care that's pathetic literally a few seasons ago i remember when we was playing man city away vincent company was on Giroud, and he was pretty much fucking running away from vincent company because he was scared that's our only out and out striker we have in this club and he was scared you know what should be happening in the summer goodbye he should be gone for saying shit like that, he should be fined and he should be fucking gone. But no, he just signed a new contract. He's here for another few years. In the past week, you had all these players coming out saying we're behind the manager, we believe in him, we're behind him, all this shit. Let's look at some stats then. Got my iPad here looking at some stats. There was an interesting article that was written last week called No Effort for Arsene. Let's have a, let's have a look at that article. It highlights the distance that each team has collectively ran in kilometres. In our last 12 Premier League games, Arsenal have been outrun by their opponents. Everton, where we lost 2-1. 1.4. That's not that bad. Man City away, we was outrun by 5 kilometres as a team. West Brom at home, we was outrun by 5 kilometres. This is the worst one. Bournemouth. Bournemouth away. The old 3-3 free free debacle. We was outrun by 7 kilometres as a team. Arsenal versus Burnley at the Emirates, we was outrun by almost 9 kilometres. And then last week, that West Brom shit performance, we was outrun by almost eight kilometers as a team now i was looking at a lot of comments to do with this article because a lot of people saying well obviously we have more possession therefore we ain't gonna run as much bullshit half the time especially when we're at home teams set out two banks of four maybe a bank of four a bank of five one up top and they stay in that formation and shift side to side together they're not all over the place backwards and forwards they sit there they hardly fucking move at times but in some of these games that notion is bullshit the bournemouth free free game that was an end-to-end -end game they weren't sitting back we didn't have all the ball in that game. We was chasing the game at times. They was fucking all over the place. The game at Man City where we lost, that was quite an end-to-end -end game. If anything, I think they might have had more of the ball. I can't really remember. That was a while ago, but I think they had more of the ball. They had run us by five kilometers. My point being, with this article, all these players are coming out saying we're behind the manager. We'll fucking shout on the pitch then. Fucking run. And the whole thing about how we have all the ball, so therefore we ain't going to run as much as the other team, is pure bullshit. Because one of the best teams I've ever seen play football is, is Pep Guardiola's Barcelona. As soon as they lost the ball, bang, straight on it. They were just as good off the ball as they was on the ball. And that's what made them such a good team. You can't say that about us. On the ball, we might look good. Off the ball, we look a fucking shambles. Don't be, don't be claiming all this bullshit. We're behind the manager. We'll fucking we'll show it at least, man. We've been outrun 12 games in a row. It's not like, oh, there's an, uh, there's an anomaly where, oh, that one time. 12, 12, our last 12 Premier League games, we have been outrun. That sums it up. 
And when I was looking at all these comments, people just have criticism about anything and everything. Alex Awobi is a 20-year-old kid. He's been thrown in at the deep end. Joel Campbell out on loan. Perez, he don't want to play Perez for some reason. Welbeck come back from injury. He didn't want to play him for some reason. He gets thrown at the deep end. He's a 20-year-old kid trying his hardest for the club. People slate the guy. They can't wait to slate the guy. You see some of the comments on Twitter. People are like, oh, he's in Nigeria playing national football. Fucking leave him there. He's shit. 20-year-old kid. Ain't that type of shit at someone with a £42 million price tag in Mesut Ozil, a World Cup winner who gets shown up by a kid half the fucking time. But Wobi, he tries to make stuff happen. He will go and pick the ball up. He'll come from deep and he'll try to run past someone. He'll try to make something happen. And people will slag him off. Sanchez could do exactly the same thing. Sanchez can lose the ball 10 times more than a Wobi in the game. And people will not, will not have a go at him. Immune from criticism. Some people are just immune from criticism in our team. Someone who isn't immune from criticism, again, is Coquelin. You got people saying, oh, what happened to Coquelin? He's shit this season. The guy's shit, we should sell him. He shouldn't even be at the club. I know why. I, I, you, can, you can tell the difference. There's been a role change. Now Xhaka's the one that plays deep. You don't see Xhaka trying to get in the box. Xhaka plays deep. Coquelin's obviously been told, you're the legs in midfield, box to box. Get backwards and forwards. And this is similar to what happened with Flamini. Remember when Flamini first come back? And he looked decent. Because he was sitting in there doing the dirty work, winning the ball, giving it to the next player. He wasn't interested in going forward. Then all of a sudden, Coquelin and Santi was playing well in the middle. So if Flamini had come on and he's playing in there with them, he's the one that's trying to get in the fucking box. And it did my head in. But obviously, that's something that the manager has identified that he wants that player to do. He wants Xhaka to sit back. He wants the other person to be the legs, backwards and forwards. Coquelin ain't going to get you a fucking goal. He's a defensive midfielder. We're putting him in a system where obviously he ain't going to look great. He ain't a fucking attacking midfielder. He ain't a box-to-box -box guy like Ramsey who's going to get you 10 goals a season or whatever. He's never scored a fucking goal for us. But people are so quick to jump on his back. At least he gives a shit. Look at this man when we score. He celebrates like one of us. He celebrates like a fucking fan. When he makes a big tackle or he sees someone else make a big tackle, you see him get hyped off that. You can't say that about all of our players. That's the manager's tactics. And I said in my last video, there's nothing more I wanted him for this man to win. This man has been called everything from a paedophile to a fucking failure and everything in between. Do you not think that I want this man to win? But some people just, they act as though you can't say no wrong about this person and they feel sorry for him. I feel sorry for the way that some people are talking about him, but I don't feel that sorry. This man is he's getting money. Eight million a year, a vast majority, a high, high percentage of people living in this world will never, ever see a tenth of that money in their fucking life. He's getting it a year. At least do your job properly, bruv. So in them terms, yes, you, you aren't immune to criticism either. The manager should not be immune to criticism when on that much money. And there's been rumours going around that he's already signed a one-year deal and he's identifying targets for next season. He's already identifying targets for next season, yeah? Well, let's just have a little look at something. Whilst he's identifying targets for next season, in the summer, he should be looking at the fucking players we've already got at the club. I'm just looking at this. Every single one of these players, contract runs out in 2018. Now, that still, to me, sounds ages away. It's 2017 now. That is next summer. Aaron Ramsey, Alexis Sanchez, Meza Ozil, Oxay Chamberlain, Jack Wilshire, Wojciech Szczesny, Sani Cazola, Kieran Gibbs, Murta Saka, Jenkinson, Joel Campbell, and Yaya Sonogo. <laughs> For forget Yaya. But he should be focusing on getting them players to re-sign their fucking contracts. People say it's the same thing over and over again now. We lose these big games, we get embarrassed. That's true, but there's also another thing that happens every other year. And it's the, the contract situation. Every other year, one of our best players in this, in, in, in this list... Most of our best players. Fuck identifying targets. Make sure Cazorla stays, Sanchez stays, Oxley Chamberlain stays, even players that get hate like Gibbs. You have to make sure he stays. As a backup left back, he has to stay. And it's just, I, I didn't notice there was that many players that contracts is literally running out in a year and a couple of months. Until I see that stat and I was like, oh shit, we really are, we really might be fucked. And there was this Chabi Alonso thing that come out when he was leaving from Liverpool to Real Madrid and there was this whole thing about oh Arsenal come in for me 18 million was the asking price they was offering 15 they didn't want to give another 3 million could have had Xavi Alonso for an extra 3 million where have we heard that before Wenger's come out this week and sound about Suarez there was a deal on the table and he agreed to it well I was just ill-advised about that little buyout clause the, fo the 40 million and one pound buyout clause so here's what you do you give him 45 million you give him 50 million he could have been, he's the best striker in the world, he could have been our fucking number nine. But we're bartering over a couple of million. That to me is inexcusable. Because that season, that was a season where Ramsey had the absolute stormer. Imagine Suarez up front. That's when Liverpool almost won it. When Liverpool should have won it. We could have had that Suarez in our team. 
probably would have won the league. And that's the type of striker who's hungry. He's a little shit. I don't particularly like the guy. He's a fucking dickhead. But look at the drive and hunger that fucking guy has to win. You can't say that about Olivier Giroud, who obviously don't want to win and not bothered about winning because he's fucking said it in an interview. I had someone comment on my, my previous video where I'm just ranting about that stupid fucking West Brom game. De deflect all the anger at, at the chairman, not just at Wenger. You're talking about spending 90 million like that's a lot. 90 million is nothing now. Man United spent that on one player. Let me just make a point. 90 million, that might not seem like a lot. If spent correctly, it's a fucking lot. The whole thing I was talking about was Xhaka or Kante. Kante's on another level to fucking everyone at the moment. We could have had him for £3 million less. Now look at it in this way. That's one player. £32 million it would have cost us. Look at the difference it's made on Leicester. Leicester looked fucking appalling. Near the bottom of the league from champions. They lost one player. That one player is Kante. Look at the difference he's made to Chelsea. That one player in the middle is doing everything for them. He's going to be in the team of the year. Might get player of the year. Who fucking knows? But that's the difference that one player can make. £90 million is a lot if you spend it right. We spent 18, 19 million on Perez, who we don't even want to play. He's on the bench half the time. We loan Joel Campbell out. How about you just don't buy Perez, keep Joel Campbell at the club. You buy Kante instead of Xhaka, so you saved yourself 3 million there. You save yourself the 18 million of Perez. You still get Mustafi and you still get holding him. Then just break the bank. 40, 50, 60 million on a striker. Who knows how it would have turned out if we spent the money differently. But the whole thing about Sanai, 90 million a lot. Don't be stupid. Compared to some teams, no, but to us, that's a fucking hell of a lot of money. Coming off of a summer transfer window the year before where we bought no outfield players and we just spent 12 million on check. 90 million is a hell of a lot of money, mate. And of course, I do agree. The ball, this cronky guy, he don't give a fuck. He don't give a fuck about winning. I don't think any of the franchises he owns win anything. All he cares about is the dollar bill. So I agree in that terms. Yeah, he has to go. And Wenger is a, a guy that comes out every single transfer window and says, if the talent is available, we'll pay any money. Well, we know that's bullshit. Griezmann, does Griezmann have eight, 80 million buyout clause? Is he not worth it? Look how he paired with Euro at the Euros. They should have won the fucking thing, but they bottled it. It can't be both ways. Either there's a fuckload of money sitting there and Wenger don't want to spend it, or there isn't and Wenger's taking a hit for it. Either way, just be honest, bruv. You ain't going to get sacked anyway. Just fucking say whatever you want. But yeah, on to City at the weekend. It's going to be fun. Looking at Man City's team, watch, watching those two Monaco legs, they can be got out of the back, man. If they fucking play Kolarov and John Stone centre back against us and we don't start well back against them boys, just take it to them. Just take it to them. We're at home. We have nothing to lose. We're playing shit. Welbeck, Sanchez, Theo on the right, Ox centre midfield. Just fucking go all out attack. Because I'd rather go down swinging than get rolled over like a little bitch again. They're there to be got at. They are there to be got at. Especially at the back. So am I confident about it? I'm not confident about it. But if we turn up, the fans are in good spirit, hopefully. We can get an early goal, get the place rocking. Who knows what can happen? But yeah, anyway, that's going to be it. I just, I, I see so many things on my timeline on Twitter that I just, ah, it just fucks me off. All these stats, all these people, yep, 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 yep. If you're Wenger in a Wenger out, I don't give a fuck. We all want the same thing. We all want to win. If he goes, he goes. If he stays, we have to move on. Who knows what's going to happen? Anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. No more ranting. Got a bit of a headache now. Peace.